teachers i know you all are doing teaching teachers generally teach but as a student of education when you come across different terminologies you often not able to differentiate between these terms like teaching learning instruction and many times we use teaching learning teaching and instruction so the focus of this discussion is basically to differentiate between the basic terms teaching learning and instruction and to discuss about the differences between these terms i am dr gaurav singh from school of education egnu and i am going to discuss with you all these terms separately let us start with teaching because you are more familiar with this term what teaching is teaching is basically when you impart knowledge or a skill or you give instructions or lessons or you instill or inspire with to your learners you are basically teaching so you can say teaching is a process or teaching is an activity that facilitates learning because when you teach you have something in your mind you have certain objectives you have some content you plan some methods and you teach accordingly so teaching is a process through which you impart knowledge or skill among your learners or among your students when we discuss about teaching there are two groups one who generally are of the opinion that teaching is an art whereas one other group is there who are of the opinion that teaching is a science let us discuss why teaching is an art Eliot Eisner in 1985 described few characteristics of teaching to place it as an art and what he said he said that teaching can be performed with such skills and grace so that both teacher as well as learner experience the whole process aesthetically so the aesthetic sense is essential in teaching he said if teacher is teaching something to the students and if there is no aesthetic connectivity there is no aesthetic sense there is no teaching he also said that teachers activities are very dynamic why dynamic because they are influenced by various qualities and contingencies and the changes which are taking place in the classroom during teaching so when you teach in your class you may have planned something but often you feel that the moment you start teaching in the classroom some situation arises some contingencies are there or some changes are taking place accordingly you change your teaching so teaching you do not perform in very strict routine or regime he also said that teachers who have good aesthetic sense are usually incorporate them in their teaching process irrespective of the subject being taught if a good teacher who is having good aesthetic sense whether the teacher is teaching science mathematics music art commerce or language or literature the teacher if having a good aesthetic sense that sense will be the part of his or her teaching learning his teaching process so whatever subject teachers are teaching they integrate this aesthetic sense and isner also said that you may plan that you will end teaching at particular point but if you are in the classroom you will find that end of your teaching is never predecided 
because the process which takes place in the classroom during your interaction with your learners with your students decides how your teaching of that day will end so when we talk about teaching as an art we basically believes we basically believe that every individual teacher teaches according to her or his aptitude abilities personality and knowledge you can take the example you observe in your school if in the same class the same subject is being taught by more than one teacher the same content is being taught by more than one teacher are both teachers teaching in same way their level of enthusiasm their methodology their personality their communication their own knowledge their aptitude and attitude all have their contribution in the teaching and one more thing is the kinesthetic of the teacher which teacher uses during teaching when i am talking about the kinesthetic i am talking about his facial expressions his voice modulation his body movement using the gest gestures so a teacher uses all these things as per the need of the content and if you see a teacher continuously you will observe that the kinesthetic style of every teacher is different and when you are in teaching process in the teaching system for long your body moves with the content you never pre decide what will be your hand movement you never pre decide what will be your eye movements you never pre decide what will be the modulation of your voice while you will teach or you will talk about a particular topic or a particular statement you will deliver it comes naturally it is nowhere written in any science so when i am talking about teaching as an art it depends upon different things because teaching is flexible a teacher use his or her talent or positivity and kinesthetics play a very important role in teaching learning every individual teach according to his or her aptitude ability personality and teaching has very personal touch that's why we believe that teaching is an art there are believers who say teaching is a science so when we try to analyze that teaching is a science we come to the approach where teaching is well planned teaching is very systematic and it is executed in a planned way in the class before your teaching starts you fixed objectives you decide methods you identify material you plan where which material will use at what time which question even when you prepare lesson plan sometimes you even decide the question you will ask and in traditional lesson planning even you assume the answer which you will get from the students so such systematic planning is there all the tools techniques strategies you plan beforehand so there is no personal touch there it is quite impersonal type of thing so in this way you can say that teaching is also science but if you see teaching as a whole and you try to analyze it as an art or as in science you will come to a conclusion that teaching is an art as well as science teaching has a blend of art and science something you plan to analyze you decide you execute that is science but the way you execute the way you interact 
the aesthetic bonding between you and your learner brought the art dimension of teaching. So, teaching is science as well as art. The another very important term is learning. What is learning? Actually, if you go through different definitions of learning, you will find that most of the definitions are saying that learning is a process of bringing change in behavior, change in behavior of the learners. And as a teacher, what you do? You only facilitate in learning through teaching. Why I am saying facilitate? Because if you recall a very famous quote of Arvindo, Sri Arvindo has said, nothing can be taught. Nothing can be taught. But everything can be learnt. So, learning is a process of acquiring. Learning is a process of assimilating. Learning is a process of analyzing. So, learning is learner centric. Teaching is teacher centric. Teaching is a process through which learning is being facilitated. If you try to analyze learning as a process, you will see that learning starts with the need and necessity of learners. What are the needs of learners? Learner try to learn according to their need. If there is no need or if they found that whatever they are going to learn and whatever teacher is coming and he or she is going to teach is not of their use or there is no need to learn about it, they will never learn. So, learning starts with need and necessity. It goes to the motivation. If there is a need, there must be a motivation among the learners to learn. So, learning involves the motivation. Sometimes teachers try to motivate learners through external means. But if you go through the literature of the learning, learning theories and the psychologist and educationist who worked on learning, you will find that the learner who are internally motivated or they call it intrinsic motivation, intrinsic motivation is more fruitful and important for learning. Extrinsic motivation can only support up to a certain extent, but intrinsic motivation is essential. Then to fulfill those needs, learner sets certain objectives that up to what extent he or she will learn, what he or she will learn and when objectives are set, learner engage himself or herself in different actions and reactions. Those actions or reactions can be interaction with the content, interaction with the method, interaction through media, interaction with teachers, interaction with peers. So, the content interaction, peer interaction, teacher interaction, interaction between method, media, tools, everything takes place. This all comes under action and reaction. And among these different actions and reactions, a learner identifies the correct response, which solves the need, which fulfills the need. And when this correct reaction is imbibed in the learner, learner try to use this knowledge to solve the problems and thus learning takes place. So, learning is very learner centric process. The third very important term is instruction. Instruction is a very designed framework. We can say it is a purposeful direction for the learning process how learning will take place in the classroom. When as a teacher you design it, how you will impart a content. If there is anything which is to be done purposefully to facilitate the learning, this called instruction. A very famous definition is of Samuel Dino, Lothar, Russell and Mims they gave in 2015. 
and they defined instruction as any intentional effort to stimulate learning by the deliberate arrangement of experiences to help learners achieve a desirable change in capability. So, what is there? An intentional effort for what? To stimulate learning. How? By deliberate arrangements of experiences. For whom? To learners. For what? To bring a desirable change in their capacity or capability. So, it is very scientific and designed part instruction. If you see different types of instructions which generally teachers give in the classroom, you will find there are five types of instructions. First we call direct instruction. What is a direct instruction? A instruction given by teacher to the learner. Means teacher decides everything. What is to be taught? How he or she will teach? What will be the method? What will be the media? What will be the learning outcomes or objectives? How it will be assessed? Everything is decided by the teacher in advance, planned and teacher directed to the learners to go accordingly, to perform accordingly, to try to learn accordingly. So instructions, such instructions are called direct instructions and these are very teacher centric in nature. The another set of instructions is called indirect instruction in which learners control the instruction. Learners decide what they will learn. Learners ask question. Learners whatever want to learn, teacher facilitate them in their learning. So here learning starts from learner, not from teacher. So if such instructions are designed, where a teacher has already designed that he or she will give the opportunity to the learner to ask certain questions and then go accordingly, then such type of instructions are called indirect instructions. The third type of instructions are interactive instructions. In direct or indirect, in both type of instructions, the interaction takes place between learner and teacher, either from teacher to learner or from learner to teacher. But if teacher designed an instructional process where he or she want interactivity among learners, interactivity among society and learners. Suppose if he or she has planned a class based on discussion method, debate, then whatever design he or she will adopt, means a teacher will adopt, will encourage the interaction among the learners. So such type of instructions are known as interactive instructions. Then comes independent instructions. Like in open and distance learning, a learner is independent of teacher, a learner is independent of another learner. Every learner learn on the basis of his or her own pace, own speed, as per time available with him or her. So, if it is very individualistic kind of instruction, where every individual is independently learning, then such type of instructions are called independent instructions. And if a teacher planned an instruction where some hands-on is there, when he or she is going to train the learners by doing, that is called learning by doing, either in laboratory or in the outside of the classroom, in a garden, in a forest, in a factory or anywhere. Means if some experimentation is involved, then such kind of instructions are called experimental instructions. So instructions can be direct, indirect, individualistic, interactive or experimental. But how this instruction process takes place? There are different instructional models and one such very prominent model is given by Gagne. In Gagne's model, there are nine steps. Let me try to explain each step to you. The first step in Gagne's model is gaining attention or it called reception. So when you are entering to your class or when you are designing your instruction, the first thing 
you should plan something to gain their attention gain learners attention so that they become ready to learn you can plan some questions you can plan a story you can plan a story you can uh, show them some visual clips you can share some uh, newspaper articles or some pictures with your learners so that they become ready okay today we are going to learn about these things so that is called gaining attention then why you have chosen a particular topic or the theme for the instruction means the second step is you should inform your learners about the objectives or what you are expecting from your learners this is called expectancy this is the second step in gagne's model so what they are expected to achieve what they are expected to do at the end of the instruction that is the second step then when you start your instructional process you also try to connect whatever you are going to teach whatever you are going to instruct with their prior learning this is called retrieval so you try again either through questions or some interaction or some activity to stimulate the recall of their prior learning if they have anything about the objectives which you have discussed with them because nowadays learners are not blank slate they are not tabula rasa they are coming with some knowledge some information some experiences so is any experience related with the topic with the concept which you are going to teach them which you have planned in your instruction so that connectivity is required which is called retrieval so after connecting with their previous knowledge a teacher presents certain stimulus to them certain stimulus means you present the content to them in different ways which they observe with which they work and when you present the stimulus you also provide them learning guidance that is called semantic encoding how they will learn you scaffold them you support them to learn you encourage them to learn and when they are learning they also responding to your questions to your activity or you can give them certain tasks to elicit their performance that is called responding when they respond when they reply what you do you give them a feedback to reinforce their learning that is called providing feedback to reinforce their learning and after reinforcement you assess their performance that what has been decided at expectancy level whether it has been achieved by the learners or not so you use different types of recapitulatory things you use different types of assessment tools you ask them to perform independently so that you can assess their performance and then you make them ready to retain whatever they have learned to enhance that and transfer it in some other situation that is called generalization knowledge created in one situation if a learner is able to apply that knowledge in similar or in different situation which has not been given by you during the instruction so what do you do you give them certain exercises you give them some cases to solve you give them some situations where they can apply the knowledge gained in the process so that you can know that whether they are able to generalize it or not so these are the nine steps of gagne which are explaining the whole instructional process so in today's discussion i talked about teaching i talked about learning and i talked about instruction and i told you teaching is a teacher centric process in which teacher decides how he or she will teach he planned his or her instruction to teach but for what to facilitate learning so learning is learner centered and i again quote uh, arvindo's statement that nothing can be taught but everything can be learned so i hope that with this discussion 
you will be able to differentiate these terms and use teaching, learning and instruction at appropriate places. Thank you very much.